evening, everyone. Tonight I want to talk with you about having confidence in prayer. The Bible gives us a lot of guidance helping us in our prayer life. And I remember talking recently about seven ways that Jesus manifests himself, and one of them is through answers to prayers. Uh, having confidence when we come to the Lord in our prayer life is something that really can excite us and get us all the more enthusiastic about coming before the Lord, bringing our prayer requests before him, knowing that the Lord hears our prayers and will answer them. And when we think about <clears throat> the seven ways Jesus manifests himself, if you remember, the first one was being filled with the Holy Spirit. The second one was through the Word of God. That's how he manifests himself. He speaks to us through his Word. The third one is through answered prayer. All three of these require the ministry of the Holy Spirit speaking to us, being filled with the Spirit, speaking to us through the Word of God, answering our prayers. In fact, he has to generate our prayers in order for us to be able to be heard on high. The fourth one was through circumstances, things that happen around us in, in the world when we, we see the goodness of God and the things that he performs in the world. The fifth one was a, a two-part, and one is through divine providence, and the other one was divine power. Divine providence is his intercession or, or intervening in our life and uh, providing through providence and protection or ways that um, God shows up through divine providence. And divine power is after we have prayed and we see the answer come and there is no other explanation except it was God doing it. Powerful, powerful demonstration of um, God's um, answers to our prayer. The sixth one is through hearing a message, maybe it's a sermon, or a person that uh, counsels with you, or even a person who just happens to come along and you never met this person. But in any one of those instances, the person doesn't know what is in your heart. And when you've been lifting up particular prayer requests before the Lord, seeking his answer, and he comes through a, a sermon or a counsel from uh, somebody, a godly man, or through somebody you just met, but God gives an answer and you can say, I know that that's the answer. That's the answer to my prayer. And that's awesome when that happens. And the seventh one is through his presence. Well, all seven of these are ways that Jesus manifests himself to us, but on the one that we're talking about tonight is on having confidence in our prayers when we come before the Lord. I want to begin with the first thing is when we come before the Lord, we need to come before him in faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we realize that if we're coming before the Lord in prayer, we need to have faith in him. We trust the Lord. The second one, or the second part of that is in Hebrews 11, verse 6. This is still the first um, step. Uh, faith being the, the main ingredient in that, uh, the first part of that. The second part of the first step is that God rewards us. And Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, Without faith it's impossible to please God, for they that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. So when you're coming to the Lord in your prayers, you want to know that God does exist. God is a living God, and I am coming before him. 
and he promises to reward those who diligently are seeking him. So when you're coming to him in prayer, you're seeking God's answer. And he wants to reward you. And as you come to him in prayer, you're coming in faith. And God is pleased to see you coming in faith and knowing that he truly exists and delights in rewarding those who will earnestly seek him. All right, that's the first step. The second step is in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, coupled with Hebrews 4, verse 16. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says this, and this is the confidence we have in him, that when we ask of him anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. When we come to the Lord, he wants us to know that he hears our prayers and that he will answer the petition that you desire. Now, the important thing to realize is what is that desire? Is it coming out of my fleshly nature or is it coming out of my spiritual nature? The Lord delights in answering the prayer of one that is coming to him through the Holy Spirit. So it's gonna be in our spiritual nature. The desires that God has planted in us by means of the Holy Spirit. That's probably why James chapter 4 says, you ask, you have not because you ask not, and when you ask, you ask amiss so that you can consume it upon your own desire, your own lust is what that's talking about. Being worldly minded. God doesn't want to honor our prayers if we're being worldly minded, coming before him with our prayers. He wants us to be spiritual minded people. And so we need the Holy Spirit to fill us. And when we come to God, we bring his word to him. That's why it says we have confidence when we pray according to his will. He, we know that he hears us and he will grant the petition that we desire of him. Hebrews 4, 16 says this, we can come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Coming to the Lord, first of all, we have to come in faith. And secondly, he wants us to come boldly to him. Anywhere we are, at any time of the day, it doesn't matter, on your knees, standing up, with your eyes open, your eyes closed, if you're walking, if you're lying down, it doesn't matter how you come before the Lord, you're just coming to Him in faith and in boldness before the Lord. The third one is an important part that we really, really need in our prayer life, and that is wisdom. God wants us to ask for wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 tells us really clearly. In fact, if we would go all, through, all the way through verse 8, we would get the whole connection of what he's saying. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraids not. But let him ask in faith without wavering. But he that wavers is like the sea tossed to and fro. And let not that man think that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. How well I understand that, because I was very <laughs> double-minded, wavering, doubting that God was even hearing my prayers, asking him for wisdom, wondering. But God shows up in the most wondrous ways and he actually is working wisdom into our life through his word and guiding us in praying out of his word, praying his word when we come to him. And we can pray with such tremendous boldness when we come to God like that because we're coming to him in faith, knowing that he hears us. When you ask for wisdom, don't doubt. Because God says that he will not 
receive answers to his prayers if he's doubting. That person, a double-minded person, is unstable. And I have to be honest to say that I was a very unstable person. I didn't have confidence in my prayers. My faith wavered. And so I was having real difficulty in understanding how to be able to live out my life before the Lord and know that my prayers are honorable to Him and that He's going to answer them. So we have faith that God is going to reward. We have boldness when we come before God and we ask in wisdom. The fourth thing is very, very important because when we come to God, we need to come having confidence in God. Like Hebrews 11 verse 1, confidence or assurance in things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. You don't see the answer to your prayers, but you have confidence that God is going to answer your prayer. And so I want to turn to Proverbs chapter 3 to get some insights that the Lord gave to me on that very note about having confidence before God. God wants us to trust Him, <clears throat> have confidence in Him, but He also wants to have confidence in us. It's a two-way thing. Not only do we communicate to God in confidence, in the prayer closet, or coming to Him in His Word, having confidence in what He's saying, this is truth, this is real truth. But no matter what we go through on a day-by-day -day basis, we can have confidence in Him and know that He has confidence in us. And this is what Proverbs chapter 3 is talking about. Beginning at verse 25 is the first part of it, having confidence in Him. This is what he said, Do not be afraid of sudden terror or of the ruin of the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. When you're going through a time of real testing and it just seems like evil is prevailing all around, God will keep you from stumbling. That's what he's wanting you to know. He won't keep your foot from being caught because you have confidence in God. That's how David, it became such a example of a man of God. Abraham, Moses, Paul, Daniel. All of these were men of God because they were all men of faith. They had confidence in God, knowing that God is not only for them, but God is with them and that God hears their prayers when they call upon him. So the Lord will be your confidence even when evil tries to trip you up, to pull you down. Second part is in verse 31. It says, Do not envy a man of violence, and do not choose any of his ways. For the devious person is an abomination to the Lord, but the upright are in his confidence. Know for sure, wicked people are an abomination to God. Hebrews, or Proverbs chapter 3 talks about um, seven things, or I think it's six things, that are an abomination to the Lord. And a person that is very wicked could be guilty of some or all of these things. Mark it down. They're an abomination to God Almighty. But for you who put your trust in Him, God has His confidence in you that you're going to stand up. You're not going to give in to the ways of the wicked people of the world, the violence. And um, even in uh, the Proverbs, it talks about not siding with anyone that asks you to come with them uh, to do evil things. You just refuse to do it, but you take a stand on what is truth. And you know that what God says is true, and so that's why you stand on it. I wanted us to look at a... a passage in the New Testament that kind of couples with this, having trust in God, having confidence in God, and then God having confidence in us. 
And there, here's the reason why. In 1 John chapter 3, I ran across a very important passage that I could see we really need this. We really need this every single moment of our life to let this just sink down deep into our heart. Because in John, 1 John chapter 3, first of all, we look at what he says in verse 18. It says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. It's not wrong to, to say that I love you to your brothers or um, you know, sister to sister, brother to brother, or even if you say it with absolute confidence on their part, if you're saying it to a sister, you, a, a, a brother saying it to a sister, you're saying it in the right way when you tell people you love them. But it's not in word is what God is saying, but in deed and in truth. It's pure love that comes from the heart. If I say I love somebody, I need to be saying it in pureness of heart, in sincerity of that love. We are to love one another. Jesus commanded it in John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. This is how we show that we're disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, when we have love one for another. But it should not just be in word, but in deed and in truth. But now he goes on and says this. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. How do we know his love is in us? He laid down his life for us, so we ought to lay down our lives for one another. That's how love is demonstrated to the fullest. Not in word, but in deed and in truth. We would be willing to lay down our lives for one another, just as Jesus laid down his life for us. Now look at this, this is how it goes on. But we, but this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts before him. When we love one another in deed and in truth, it shows up that we know we are of the truth and can reassure our hearts before him that our love is genuine, that we're acting 